right, everybody. Welcome to another fabulous week of the Doe and Five O Show. Damn, it feels like we just did this. <laughs> it does feel like that. I think we're even still wearing the same damn clothes as last week. We are. You're I'll dirty. be darned. <laughs> You're disgusting. You are. We're both disgusting. <laughs> um, as we announced last week, I'm actually in Florida, so this show's was taped two weeks ago, I guess, at this point. So. Uh, we wanted to make sure we didn't skip a, skip a beat, so we recorded back-to-back -back shows, so apologize if some of these headlines are boring to you guys. They shouldn't be, because they're obscure, and I think they're funny. I'm going to start here, Joe, out of Cleveland, Ohio, where you can watch a drone drop some weed and a cell phone into the inmates at the Ohio jail. <laughs> Attack of the drones. I'll put the video up there for everybody uh, to see. Joe's not seen <laughs> I, this should be a first for me. He's oh, he's so he can, waiting for he's, it. He's waiting for it, so he knows it's coming. He's got his uh, shirt. He's got a shirt there. I think he's going to try and catch catch the incoming uh, package. Here, oh, here it comes. Oh, oh, he tripped over the cornhole board, <laughs> and he, he dropped it down and picked it right up. Look how <clears> slick <throat> that is! Wow, uh, he's on surveillance, right? So, yeah, out of Cleveland, Ohio, the county prosecutor's office is investigating after a drone dropped materials for inmates to use inside the county jail complex in Euclid. Surveillance video that you guys have seen here, uh, released by the county, shows a group of male inmates playing cornhole before one looks up into the sky. Dark object can be then seen dropping to the ground, and the man goes to grab it before walking away back to the, uh, to the back wall to join the other guys. Officials say the incident took place in the summer, and the materials included marijuana and a cell phone. Prosecutors say the case is under review, although no criminal charges have been filed at this time. So that's a pretty creative way to get some uh, dope and, well, you know, whatever, illegal items into the, into the jail. You know, what, what, all they're just going to make it so the inmates can't be outside. Yeah. It, it, I'm sure they were probably put on lockdown. So. Oh, jeez. Uh, out of Indiana, Joe, here, Tip, Tippecanoe County, Indiana, a couple accused of abandoning, abandoning their daughter says she was actually an adult who tried to kill them. Oh, well, I, <laughs> if that's true, I get it. A couple accused of abandoning, abandoning their adopted daughter says the allegations are false and that they are the victims. According to court, court documents filed earlier this month in Tippecanoe County, Christine and Michael Barnett adopted a Ukrainian-born a Ukrainian girl with dwarfism back in 2010, but they abandoned her in Lafayette, Indiana in 2013 when they moved to Canada. They're accused of changing the girl's age from 8 to 22 before they left. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they told the girl to tell people that she looks young for her age. Wow. Why wouldn't they say at least 18? I mean, 22, that's <laughs> weird. All right. They're, they're a bright couple. Well, they were both charged with neglect of a dependent, and they bonded out of the Tippecanoe County Jail last week. But in an interview with the Daily Mail, Christine says the adoption was a scam, and the girl is actually an adult who has made a career out of fooling people into thinking she's a young girl. Christine told the Daily Mail she and her now ex-husband agreed to an emergency adoption from an adoption center in Florida. <laughs> It all comes around, doesn't it? They didn't know many details about the girl's background. They just knew she needed a home immediately because her previous adoptive parents gave her up for undisclosed reasons. Within the first few weeks, Christine told the Daily Mail there were signs that their new daughter wasn't actually a young girl at all. She had a sophisticated vo vocabulary, she shunned other children, and she had a period. Oh, well, that would probably tell you. They took the girl to a family physician who ordered a bone density test to help determine her actual age. The results suggested she was at least the, at 14 years of age, so Christine says their family began treating her like a teenager. But then Christine says the girl started making death threats against them. She allegedly tried to poison Christine and push her into an electric fence, and she attacked a baby. The Barnett family took the girl to a state-run psychiatric unit to get her help. During treatment, the girl allegedly confessed to being much older, and she said she wanted to kill her family. No. Oh. WLFI News out of Lafayette got a doctor's report that says Barnett's daughter is actually an adult, the letter says the girl has made a career out of, out of perpetuating her age facade, and she has continued to fool those who have the best intentions. They legally changed the girl's age in, 2000 of, in June of 2012 with the Marion County Superior Court so she could receive appro appropriate psychiatric care. Christine told the Daily Mail they helped her to get a Social Security number, apply for benefits, food stamps, and an identification card. In August of 2012, she was discharged from a secure psychiatric care unit, and she was placed under the supervision of state health care provider. When she was kicked out of that facility, Christine says they helped her secure housing for her in, Laf in Lafayette. They continued to pay for her housing when they moved to Canada for their son Jacob's education. Jacob, now age 21, is a, psych uh, is a, psycho a psychologist prodigy. The entire family moved to uh, Canada so he could attend the Premier Institute for Theoretical uh, Physics. I'm sorry, he's a physician. 
in uh, Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. While in Lafayette, the girl attended classes at a Lafayette Adult Resource Academy. WLFI spoke with a woman who was uh, her colleague, colleague and neighbor. She said the girl just stopped going to classes one day. Court documents obtained by the news shows she was evicted from her apartment back in May of 2014. By then, Christine says she vanished and stopped returning her calls. She fears she stopped talk taking her medication and is posing as a child for another family. I would have forced her back into treatment, but I couldn't do that any longer because she was an adult. In 2016, the couple applied to become the girl's guardians, but the Barnetts filed an objection saying she was an adult. Christine says witnesses came before the court to testify they were certain the girl was uh, 22 years old. The judge upheld the original results, and the couple dropped the guardianship petition. Christine says it doesn't make sense why they're being charged with crimes now, all these years later, uh, after her age was upheld in a court for the second time. Michael is expected to appear in the Tippecan Superior Court in Lafayette. It's unclear when uh, Christine's next court date is. So this is very bizarre. Well, that changed all... all I mean, at first I thought these were terrible parents, <laughs> and at the end it's like, uh, leave them alone. That, yeah. that chick is nuts. So she really is 22. Yeah, according to the court records, yeah. Yeah. So that's that wasn't man, can you even, imagine. That wasn't even a funny story though. That was that's just It started off sounding funny and yeah, then, it did. It's, it's and very it, bizarre. I mean, can you imagine going through an adoption agency? Don't ever do it in Florida for sure. No, no. Well but, it, the whole thing was jacked up. The the there has to be right now and stuff like that. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. Strange, oh goodness. Man. Strange, very strange. Um, moving on to Connecticut, Connecticut nursing home and now in hot water for, uh, uh Oh, Connecticut nursing home in hot water after residents keep getting caught Joe with cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nursing home in Connecticut has been fined due to the use of cocaine on the premises. Uh, residents of the regal care of new Haven have been caught on numerous occasions with traces of the substance. Be they be un be that be that they're unresponsive on the floor due to, to due to overdosing or simply handling someone, someone on a cocaine tainted dollar bill. According to the New York Post, on a nurse's aide, a nurse's aide was fired after a resident told staff that the aide was funneling the cocaine into the facility. After every drug-related incident, staffers were ordered to enter the residents' rooms to search for drugs, but ultimately, they did not carry out the orders. Regal Care of New Haven was later fined one thousand six hundred eighty dollars by the CT Par Department of Public Health. That's and it. Granny and Grandpa just trying to have a good time before they go out. Th just pastors. over a thousand dollars. Yeah, big deal, right? I I'm a little concerned about that place I, i'm not sending my mom there well does she live in connecticut no i'm just oh. saying i'm just saying out of west harrison indiana joe investigators quickly solved crime after finding alleged thief's phone at the scene of the crime see now we're getting a better stories a man accused of breaking into an indiana business invest made the investigators jobs easy police said he left a cell phone at the crime scene <laughs> according to eagle county 99.3 Police were called to USA Choppers in West Harrison on September 17th after someone broke into the store and sold silver items. A neighbor, uh, neighboring business owner provided police with surveillance camera footage, and they tracked a white Nissan Maxica, Maxima to Michael R. Cheney. Police also found Cheney's cell phone underneath a window, which the thief broke in order to break into the business. <laughs> Cheney was arrested and charged with burglary while armed with a deadly weapon, which was a level 2 felony. Burglary at a level 5 felony. Theft, a Class A misdemeanor, and two counts of criminal mischief, both Class B misdemeanors. He didn't seem too pretty. He, I mean, he's, he's pretty happy that he got booked in there, it looks like. so. Yeah. Well. I forgot my, they found my phone. That's probably what he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for that. It was an expensive phone. <laughs> can't fix stupid, folks. You can't fix stupid. Northeast man in court uh, for farting while bent over during a strip search. <laughs> <laughs> man has been ordered... <laughs> <laughs> man has been ordered to carry out unpaid work after he farted a, during a police strip search telling them how do you like that <laughs> disgruntled Stuart cook deliberately broke wind three times during the search after being caught with cannabis how do you deliberately break wind <laughs> alan townsend said police attended a well, where is this out of this is somewhere else um let's just assume it's florida <laughs> yeah, no it's not it's another country uh oh, okay Anyway, they, 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 they were following up on a report of collision, saw a 28-year-old standing next to a vehicle talking to the driver of another vehicle. He said officers approached him and smelled uh, some weed. Cook became irate and, he was irate, and then he was handcuffed, and he began shouting at the officers. A search was carried out of Cook, and the vehicle contained a small amount of marijuana. Cook continued to act in the same way when he was driven to the local police station. He screamed explicitives at the officers and puffed out his chest, according to the court documents. At the station, he was strip-searched and told to bend over. 
At a previous hearing, uh, the prosecutor described what happened next. She said he deliberately farted in the direction of the officer three different times, stating, How do you like that? Uh, Cook of Ann Street and Stonehaven previously pled guilty, previously pled guilty to possession of marijuana and to behaving, behaving in a threatening or abusive manner by shouting and screaming aggressively, displaying aggressive body language, making lewd remarks towards police, and, and intentionally fluctuating in the direction of officers. No, okay, so he's being stripped. Sure. So he's <laughs> he's bent over, and he's he's in a very vulnerable position because <laughs> instead of searching with what do they use to search? Never mind. I know what they're searching. What if they use their fist? <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> I mean, I just wonder what he had for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or whatever, before this happened. Though. I'm sure somebody knows. <laughs> well, uh, after, after that whole escapade, he was ordered to carry out uh, 75 hours of unpaid work. Just for farting on the police. <laughs> And having some weed on him. <laughs> all right, well, that's all we got for this week's stimulating news headlines. Now it's time, this Joe, for this week in Florida. Florida! Here we go. A couple stops at a local truck stop. Only in Florida would you find a camel. The chick gets inside, the camel sits on her. Her only way out was to bite on his balls. What the hell is with Florida, where all crazy shit seems to come from? A week won't pass by without lots of stories proving that Florida's dumb. <laughs> Alright everybody, welcome to another glorious week in Florida. Freaking Disneyland. <laughs> world or wherever the hell i am I <laughs> one's in california and yeah, one's in florida both no. states are effed up anyway <laughs> so it doesn't really matter are there like a bunch of people back there or are we just in front of the gates or where are we uh, we got the whole the big castle in the background there and yeah yeah hey at least all the people aren't around yeah i don't do well with that many people yeah out of <clears> palm <throat> beach county florida joe florida parent is upset over a school quiz questions about president trump Palm Beach County teacher is now under investigation and a parent is upset by a question on a school quiz that said he was given to his child at Watson B. Duncan Middle School in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. The parent, who wished to remain, remain anonymous, said the quiz gave multiple choice answers to this question. Uh, the question reads, the 45th president, 2017, Republican, real estate businessman, idiot. The possible <laughs> answers were Donald Trump, Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon, or Jimmy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> president Donald Trump is our nation's 45th president. He officially took office in 2017. He is a Republican, and prior to becoming a politician, he was a real estate businessman. After the student showed this uh, quiz to his father, the dad went to the school administrators about it. As a result, the principal at Duncan Middle School sent this letter to the parents, hello, uh, to all parents. Hello, Duncan Middle School parents. This is Principal Philip D. Amico. Uh, a question on a quiz given by your child's computer applications teacher yesterday was brought to my attention this morning. The question was inappropriate and demonstrated an unacceptable lack of good judgment on the part of the teacher. An investigation is now underway, and the teacher has been reassigned during this process. Because this is an open inquiry, I am not at a liberty to share any additional details with you at this point. I apologize for this incident and for the offensive verbiage used in the question. Thank you for your patience and your continued support of Watson B. Duncan Middle School. Uh, WTB, blah, blah, WPTV has reached out to Quizlet. <laughs> The software program that tires? students <laughs> use to take this quiz, and they're still waiting to hear back. So, I've, I'll put that up there. That's, I mean, it's legit. It was on the computer. You can see it there. Yeah. Um, so, basically, it's the, the title line reads, 40, uh, 45th president. And so, she's breaking it down into right. clues. And then, at the very end, it puts idiot. You know, when... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Why, you know, just like people would be up in arms if it was the other way around, if they said oh, Obama, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Of course, this teacher would have been hung or something for it. But come on, that's funny. So, so they call him an idiot. Now, obviously, this teacher doesn't like Trump. <laughs> so what? My gosh. They, I mean, should it have been on the test? No. Okay. They should have said, hey, don't, don't do that again take that off but there shouldn't be any disciplinary action that's stupid that was 
that was really funny. Get a sense of humor. Stop being whiny, butthurt little. But you know, and I, on the flip side of that, I, I can see why he's upset because I mean, even if the guy, the parent of this kid that, that made the complaint, whether he's a Trump fan or not a Trump fan, um, you know, he, you're talking about young and impressionable minds where this teacher, and we see this in education all the time, where you know they're they're supposed to be molding these minds, and you know, if this guy is a Trump supporter, well, the parents should be molding the minds. The teacher should be teaching. But, but yeah, like I said, it's, it, well, it's it's not acceptable, and it should be pulled from that. But I don't think yeah. anyone should get fired for it. That's it was funny. It, it would have been just as funny if they did it with any other president. But I agree. The, the headline, the whole article was funny to me. But it, you're right. If this would have happened, you know, several years ago when Obama was in office. Oh no, that wouldn't have worked at all. Happened, they would have crucified <laughs> that teacher at the yes, stake. Yes, they would have found a way to throw her into federal federal prison. But and that, else. but that wouldn't have been right either. No. So I I I'm just I think saying, this should have been it should have been rectified. Have it should have been corrected. Maybe they should have docked some salary. Should have done something with this teacher. But yeah. uh, if there anything's more severe than that, then that's crap. That w- that was funny. Out of Orlando, Florida, officer has been suspended after arresting two six-year-old children at a Florida school. An Orlando <laughs> police officer has been suspended after arresting two six-year-old tr- children last week. In one case, the child's grandmother, uh, Mrs. Kirkland, told WKMG-TV that her daughter has been acting out in class. Kirkland said that the girl suffers from a medical condition that sometimes leads to a slack, lack of sleep. I wonder what that is, because I probably have it. <laughs> uh, the six-year-old kicked a staff member who tried to calm her down, according to Kirkland. The little girl was charged with battery. How do you charge a six-year-old child because she kicked somebody, Kirkland said. A literal mugshot of a six-year-old girl. Another six-year-old was arrested in an unrelated case. No six-year-old child should be able to tell somebody that they had handcuffs on them and they were riding in the back seat of a police car and taken to a juvenile center to be fingerprinted and mugshot. A mugshot taken. According to the Orlando Police Department, officers are supposed to get approval from a watch commander before arresting someone under the age of 12. School resource officer, identified as Officer Turner, failed to follow that policy, according to the department. While one child was processed, including fingerprinted and uh, mugshot taken, Police said the processing for the second child was stopped when the transporting officer realized approval had yet, had not been given for the arrest. Police department uh, has launched an internal investigation into the matter. Arresting a six-year-old kid. Well, I don't care if she's tired or not. She shouldn't have kicked him. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe that scared her a little bit. Maybe that's yeah. not so bad. I mean, she wasn't strip searched or anything, was she? I seriously doubt that. Well, then... If it scared her and she's going to straighten up a little bit, maybe that's a good idea. I, Boy, things need to go back to where they were before. There, There's got to be more to that story than what we're seeing. I mean, I, I don't think it was yeah. just a kick. and it, Yeah, there's there's always a little more to that. So I just thought it was interesting that a six-year-old was handcuffed and thrown in the back seat of a car. Two of them. I mean, maybe she wasn't really six years old. Maybe she was a 22-year-old <laughs> midget. But... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was that this story or was that Hell, I don't last know. week? <laughs> I don't remember now. <laughs> But you knew where I was going with it. I did. All right, it's time for the uh, article that inspired the, this week's uh, musical masterpiece. One of my favorite, one of my favorite Florida <laughs> stories I've ever we've ever had. In a wild encounter, a woman bites testicles off her, off of a tiger truck stop camel to escape. Wait, she bites them off. Is that what you said? Bites testicles of. Oh, okay. You said <laughs> off. That, there's a big difference there. <laughs> That's a big difference. Out of gross. How do you say this? Is it teat? Tet? I don't even see where you're looking. Right there. Oh, okay. I I wouldn't say it. We're going to go with teat. All right. Out of gross teat, Florida. A Florida woman freed herself from a camel by biting its testicles at the tiger truck stop in gross teat last week. Where exactly was the camel (laughs) sitting on her? (laughs) After she crawled into the animal's pen to retrieve her dog and the camel sat on her. (laughs) The woman's husband had been throwing treats to their dog under Casper, the camel's fence, Wednesday evening (laughs) before the dog went inside to retrieve them. Uh, After the dog began interacting with the camel, the couple crawled in to get it. While inside, the camel sat on the woman, and then she bit the animal to get it off of her. She said, (laughs) "I don't." She says, and I quote, "I bit his balls to get him, (laughs) get him off of me. I bit his testicles to get him off of me." (laughs) So many things I could say right now, and I choose not to. But I, I wonder if there's a video of that because. I don't think of a camel as being real spry. So, I mean, she got in there and it it sat on her so fast she couldn't get out of there. So it seems like, and I never saw a camel sit. 
<laughs> I mean, is that something they never normally do? <laughs> I don't know. There's there's more to this story. But uh Well the investigation found that the couple had provoked the camel before it sat on the woman. The camel did nothing wrong. The couple were aggressive, the camel was just doing its normal routine. The truck stop stop, which is located twenty minutes outside of Baton Rouge, keeps a camel named Casper and for many years controversially kept a tiger for visitors to see on site. The couple, who weren't identified, stopped at the truck stop to let the dog out. Authorities didn't find reasons to hold the truck stop liable for their injuries because the camel was enclosed and signs warning visitors to stay out of our post at every I feet. think the only person hurt was the camel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure they're trying to sue this truck stop for everything under the sun. Um, Why does a truck stop have a camel? Or a tiger, for that matter. Right. Uh, the camel has never been aggressive. The camel has never gotten out, and it's never caused any issues. In fact, the husband and wife stated before that that we've seen here, we've seen here before, and they've never had any problems. Deputies cited the couple for a leash law violation for the dog and criminal trespassing for going across the fence. State laws prohibit anyone from letting their dogs run free on enclosed or unenclosed private property. The gross teat truck stop has been fending off animal rights activists for years who wanted a tiger that was once caged there removed from their property. The tiger ended up dying uh, last year after 17 years of living in captivity at the gas station. Wow. Uh, the truck stop also keeps a petting zoo with a miniature horse, a baby kangaroo, and a member of the raccoon family. Hamilton said he was baffled by the entire incident and the couple's behavior. My only question to her husband was, why did you just throw the doggy treat under the fence? That and was his question? And he she should... bit the camel's balls. My, <laughs> that's my question. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, anyway, the husband said he wasn't really thinking when he threw the, <laughs> threw the treat under the fence. Uh, Pamela Bossier, the truck stop's manager, said the couple should have sought help from employees who were inside the truck stop's 24-hour cafe just a few yards from the pen. Instead, they decided to take matter into their own hands and crawling under a single strand of barbed wire at the bottom of the fence. Oh my gosh, they just keep getting smarter yeah. and smarter. Once inside, uh, the man shoved the, cam <laughs> shoved the camel and used his hat to swat at it. That was what upset the camel. Any animal you provoke, they're going to strike back. Uh, the manager said in 30 years, the stop has kept wild animals, including the tiger, and it has never had any attacks on visitors, including the camel. He's just a gentle giant. Well, until he... Had his testes. <laughs> Shoot How, what, was there any retaliation when he had his balls bit? And then nothing happened after that? He just got up? I, I, mean, I, I don't know. What, pretty upset. I don't know what type of sounds of uh, anguish a camel makes, but I have this certain noise <laughs> placed in my head. <laughs> this would make for a hell of a, of a scene in a, some type of comedy movie, you know? I, why, do, why do I see Adam Sandler doing this? <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Adam. <laughs> Adam, we have some great... We know you're watching, Adam. We have a great idea for you. There's a camel at a truck stop. Well, that's you can't top that story. That's all no, we got for this week. No, no that, my favorite story ever. That's all I got for this week in Florida. Joe, we're going to switch to the sports side. Uh, gonna, uh, we did a sports a couple times for yeah. our ending segment. So. Oh, instead of the political yeah, garbage. garbage. So we're going to do this week in sports. We're going to talk about how uh, there's a possible return for Peyton Manning to the NFL. Not playing. No, no. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's all we got for this week in Florida. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, coming up next is This Week in Sports. Alright everybody, welcome to This Week in Sports. This Week in Sports. Uh, Joe, we're going to talk about uh, QB1, baby. Peyton Manning. Beautiful, beautiful RCA Dome. You remember the good old days in the RCA Dome? Yep. RCA Dome. Also, RC, Peyton, he can't say he built the RCA Peyton, Dome, but he... Peyton's he, place. He definitely lifted the Colts to... Oh my to gosh, I'll tell you what, building, so. I have... I'm, I'm older than you are. I've watched a lot of quarterbacks. Of course, being yeah. a Packers fan... I've seen Bart Starr play. I've saw I saw Brett Favre. I saw Aaron Rodgers. I've seen some great quarterbacks, Dan Fouts, uh, uh, Marino, uh, uh, Montana. I could go on and on. But Peyton Manning like had to be the smartest quarterback yeah. I ever saw play the game. The guy was amazing. Well, uh, according to his dad, Archie Manning, he says Peyton eventually wants to return to the NFL in one of two positions. Uh, ever since Peyton Manning retired in March of 2016, 
There's basically been nonstop speculation that the future Hall of Famer would eventually return to the NFL in some capacity, with many people feeling that Manning might take an announcing job. Uh, although that could definitely happen, there are apparently uh, two other options on the table for the former Bron Broncos and Colts quarterback. According to Archie Manning, Peyton will almost certainly be returning to football at some point in time, and it appears he's hoping to end up in one of two positions. Peyton, somewhere along the line, would like to be back in football, in ownership, or the front office. Basically, it sounds like Peyton could go the John Elway route, where he's running a football team and making the personnel decisions, or possibly even ownership of a team could be in his future if he can find an owner willing to sell him in a, minor, a minority stake. Peyton has already had several chances to return in the NFL off over the past several years since his retirement, with multiple networks trying to hire him as an announcer. So far, he's turned everything down. As a matter of fact, ESPN was so determined to land Manning for their Monday Night Football job this year that two executives flew to his home in Denver this offseason to try and convince him to take the gig. Apparently, the reason Peyton hasn't accepted any NFL job officers, offers, or offers is because he's enjoying retirement, and once he takes an NFL job, he'll throw himself all in because, well, that's what Peyton does. That's how he is, right. Uh, that would kind of isolate him, and right now he's doing a lot of different things and really, really enjoying his life. When Peyton played, he was a grinder. I mean, he was up early and late, and he was just, and now he's just enjoying life. One other thing that could be holding Peyton back from taking an NFL job is the fact that his little brother Eli is still playing in the NFL. During an interview at his football camp in June, Peyton admitted that the Eli factor was one reason why he wasn't interested in making a return just yet. It's great to have someone that you're so close to that you feel invested in to watch Eli play and to, to watch Eli play and compete. Uh, Manning said via Yahoo Sports. I know when Eli stops playing, which he kind of is because he's been benched, right. uh, it will be different because you have a brother, you feel part of it. I pull hard for Eli. With Eli now on the Giants bench, there you go, there's a very real chance that he could actually end up retiring after the 2019 season. And if that happens, we could actually see Peyton return to the NFL capacity sometime next year. So this article touches on uh, basically Peyton's work ethic, and that's all you saw and heard of all the years he was here in Indiana. Uh, all the teammates that came and gone uh, during Peyton's time here of how big of a pain in the ass the guy was to work with. Perfectionist, right. Because nothing was ever good enough for Peyton. Right. And they weren't saying that in a negative way. He, that's just how competitive the man is. Mm -hmm. And if you go back and read things about his time in college and even high school and, and his teammates that he's had throughout his career, they all said the same thing. You will never, ever, ever outwork Peyton Manning. Right. You may be able to beat him on a rare occasion, but you'll never outwork him. And, you know, all the everybody, all the coaches, all the receivers, all the running backs, all of the offensive linemen said that they never had worked with a more intelligent athlete in their entire yeah. life than Peyton Manning. <clears throat> and I remember an article years ago when Peyton was still playing that said he would never be a coach because everybody thought he would make an excellent football coach. No, I think he'd be a terrible coach. But he said, I could never be a coach because no one would ever live up to my standards. Right. He and, would, yeah, he, would, he wouldn't do well. And he would expect... His players to have the same work ethic he right. had, and, and nobody it, does. It won't happen, no. Um, and, and even at that, you know, you put him in a. <clears throat> and that's why I thought even a GM or yeah. owner, he'd sell the problems. But I think he'd be an awesome announcer because he could, you know, he can. He'd be the John Mad, how John Madden yeah. was. He could watch a play and and he could tell you what all eleven the guys did on on one side of the ball. He he could say this guy did this guy, and I'm going. I'm not even quite sure where the football went in that play. <laughs> yeah. But he would know everything that happened. This guy pulled, this guy, this guy, this guy missed a, uh, a block. It's like, oh, I'll be damned. I missed all that shit. And uh, I think Peyton could do that. I think he'd be very good at it. And, you know, I, I don't know how many of you out there actually follow Peyton outside of football, I guess. But he's he's done this different comedic things you know commercials and his commercials were funny <clears throat> he's been on saturday night live and the man is hilarious he's, he's, he's really good. funny so i mean I'm, I'm like you i think he would be an excellent announcer or a broadcaster of some kind in the nfl and mm -hmm. you know it it's kind of fun to watch to me um as much as i despise the dallas cowboys tony romo is a really good announcer now in the nfl and he can actually predict what's going to happen before the play happens being a, you know being a quarterback and right. Peyton would be able to do the same thing oh yeah me. Tony Romo was uh I hate the Cowboys <clears throat> yeah. also but I always liked Tony Romo he was fun to watch but he I he, mean, he had a lot of health problems he really yeah didn't. he did and he got blamed for a lot you know I, his big ding on his career was uh couldn't play in the big game but you look at his stats in the big games. His stats were good. His team <laughs> choked. Yeah, his team was not good. It was not him. He was he was very good. And I thought he retired just a little prematurely. But it's not my body that was all beat to hell either. So I and I don't doubt Peyton's intelligence to build a Super Bowl contending team. 
I, I think I he just could do think, it. I, think, I just don't think anyone would ever live up to those standards. I think he'd so. micromanage the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he could. I don't think he could stand. And he'd be there twenty four seven. That's not fair to his family either. Right. I think he needs to wait. I think he needs to wait until his kids are a little bit older, and then if he wants to go ahead and do that. But I. He's probably an awesome dad too, twenty four seven, making sure those kids are just right. So I, I feel sorry for the kids if they get into football. You know, like, can you imagine having no, that guy sitting no on the sidelines flag football? <laughs> are you gonna go to football? No, no, dad. What sport do you hate? What sport do you suck at? I want that sport. <laughs> Jeez. So, well, I mean, it, it's just an interesting story. I mean, obviously, yeah. anybody that, you know, watched Peyton for all the years, you know, whether it was in Indianapolis or Denver or University of Tennessee, whatever, um, he's, it's a hard not to like the guy. It just, mm, yeah. Um, he, Boy, uh, his last year in Denver was painful to watch, though. Yeah, it was. Oh, my gosh. That guy, his fit. And, you know, he, he probably could play better now than he did his probably, last year. Yeah. But he was hurt he was so bad. Yeah. He was just toughing it out. And you know that no play came into the huddle that he was throwing deep and say, yeah, no, no, we're not doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so. too because he had he had a really good arm. Yeah, it was that that last year. Uh, uh. Well, I think that you know, especially with all the drama that you see in the NFL nowadays, um, with all the oh, I don't prima think he could. athletes that oh, Peyton would be good. You know, a good thing for is, the NFL. So, it, like uh, Marvin <clears throat> Harrison. Mm-hmm. For the Colts, uh, outstanding wide receiver. If you don't follow the Colts, um, but he had a lot of personal problems. Yeah. But you didn't hear shit about that while Peyton was there. Yeah, and it wasn't until Marvin Harrison retired yeah. that then then you found out. But you know these wide receivers are wide receivers are prima donnas anyway. Yeah, seems like they're the worst ones. But uh, not around Peyton, it wasn't going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> nope, if he'd have started showing yeah. his butt during his playing days, Peyton would have had him shipped off. Um, so yeah, I, I personally would love to see Peyton back in the league in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he would be very beneficial. Just to, class, Eli just too. Stuff. His yeah. his brother was classy too. So. Archie, I don't remember too much about him except he was always on the ground. I played for the Saints. So. Yeah, <laughs> I think he played for one other team his last year or something. But yeah. and now, did you ever watch Archie play? Mm-hmm. I got I got to watch him play too, and man was running for his life all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it was sad to see. Said, and everyone, I never watched him in college, but when he came in, they said, oh my gosh, this guy's going to be great. And uh, he never had a chance to. Yeah. There's been other quarterbacks like that, too, that came in the league. And I don't know if you remember when Tampa Bay first became a team. John McKay, I think, was their coach. And they brought in, let's see, Doug Williams was there, Vinny mm-hmm. Testaverde was there, Steve Young was there. Just a plethora of amazing quarterbacks because they kept getting the first pick. Yeah. And they just beat him to hell. <laughs> it was bad. Even Ditka couldn't save the Saints. <laughs> no, no, he couldn't. They no. did win a Super Bowl, though, with their coach now. Uh, and Drew Brees, obviously, is an amazing quarterback. Oh, he's good. He's another but he's class gonna, He's got to be coming down towards the end of his career, too. He is. And he's hurt right now, isn't he? He, he may be. So, um, But, yeah, I mean, we've rambled on about too many different things here. But we're all for Peyton coming back to the NFL in some way, shape, or form. I think yep. it'll be good for the league, so. Uh, That's all we got for this week in sports, folks. Uh, Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week. Take care. All right, bye. The chick gets inside. The camel sits on her. Her only way out was to bite on his balls. (laughs) (laughs) Those come way too quickly and naturally to you. I'm just thinking of the whole story. What what the hell's wrong with this woman? I still say, how did she get in there? And it suddenly sat on her. I think she was trying I think she was trying to do a donkey show with it. Maybe. A camel show. <laughs>